Hey, let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Roosevelt Williams III. I'm a senior pastor here at St. John's African Methodist Episcopal Church. We give God praise for today. We give God praise for you. We thank God for how he's moving in this earth realm. We want to begin this morning's praise with this morning's announcements. This must be turned into the you may email your announcement to St. John's AME at BellSouth.net. Join us for prayer. St. John's Church prayer line is available every Tuesday morning at 6:15 a.m. Please feel free to join the call. The prayer line number 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. Greetings, St. John's family. St. John's annual Youth Day program has been scheduled virtually for Sunday, June the 13th, 2021. The guest speaker will be Reverend Deontay Anderson. We are asking each youth to submit a recent photo and their achievements for 2020-2021. All information may be sent via email to any of the following email addresses. SCED at St. John's AME.com, SWET25 at gmail.com, or Roosevelt Williams III at gmail.com. All information must be submitted by June the 5th. That's June the 5th. That's this week. So please get that information in. Check your email for the official announcement and a copy of the achievement form. If you have any questions, please contact Shamika Whetstone. The Sunday School will host an end of the school year bash on Sunday, June the 13th after the Youth Day program. And this is for all St. John members, not just the youth, all St. John members. The event will be held at Oak Park, shelter number four, from 1.30 to 4 p.m. The food will be catered by Jim and Nick's Barbecue with the choice of pulled pork or chicken, games and prizes for kids and adults alike. If you plan to attend, very, very important part. If you plan to attend, please call the church office to sign up and indicate your preference of pulled pork or chicken. The deadline to sign up is Wednesday, June the 9th. That's Wednesday, June the 9th. For more information, contact Ira Simmons or Cynthia Underwood Thomas. The Couples Encounter Ministry new book focus for 2021 is The Marriage You've Always Wanted by Gary Chapman. We hope all couples will join us for our Couples Encounter Ministry each third Saturday at 6.30 p.m. in 2021. For more information, contact Reverend Sheila. Join us on Facebook for our Friday Night Live services at 7.30 p.m. You may also connect on Facebook at facebook.com slash roosevelt.williams.315. We are studying the Holy Spirit. Join us for Conference Call Sunday School at 9, 10 a.m. each Sunday morning. Call in number 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. For more information, contact Iris Simmons. St. John's youth can attend the teen Sunday School via Zoom at 9.30 a.m. each Sunday morning. For more information, contact Terry Brown. Join us for Evenings at the Altar prayer line on Sunday evenings at 6.15 p.m. Call in number 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. The Youth House Ministry will have Bible study via Zoom. Join in on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. for Bible study. For more information, contact Pastor Williams. There are two adult Bible school offerings on Wednesdays as well. Join Terry Brown for conference call adult Bible studies at 6.15 p.m. The call in number 605-313-5862 with an access code of 540-310. The second offering is via Zoom organized by Ted Morgan. So join in the Zoom adult Bible studies on Wednesdays at 6.45 p.m. For more information, contact Ted Morgan. Please join us on Friday for Bible study at 11.50 a.m. via conference call. 
Number 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. We are studying the book of Psalms. For more information, contact Pastor Williams. Children's Bible study via Zoom is held on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. for grades 1st through 3rd, at 6.15 p.m. for grades 4 through 6. Join us on the Zoom. Email list update. If you would like to be added to the email distribution list for St. John's Happenings, please send an email to stjohnsame at bellsouth.net. Don't forget that you can give using our online platform, Givelify. Download the app to your mobile device. Our scripture for the week. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must close yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's Colossians 3.12. Our birthdays for the week of May 30th through June 5th, 2021. Clinton Perry on the 30th. Evelyn Golden. Michaela Manuel. Re Reagan Smith on the first, Elena Jones on the second, Ma Mary Etta Faniel on the fourth, praying that God gives you a day as bright and wonderful as you. Happy birthday. Oh, we have some more anniversaries. Daphne Manning Lawson on the second, Joe and Tracy Kendrick on the fourth, David and Edith Davis on the fifth. And we have a new marriage. And we're praising God for this new union. Crystal Hannah and Stanley King were married on yesterday. Congratulations. May your marriage be blessed with love, joy, and companionship. Happy anniversary to our anniversaries and congratulations on the new marriage. May we remember to pray for our sick and shut in. Wait, may we give them a call or send them a card. Just let them know that you're thinking about them. And may we continue to pray one for each other, not just for our church family, but for our city, our state, and our nation, and this world, that God will grant us a healing and a peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come now, Lord God, to say thank you. Lord God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for your love. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for this day, Lord God, that we've never seen before. And at 12 a.m., Lord God, we'll never see it again. But Lord God, while we're here, we'll say thank you. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for the rising of the sun, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you for the going down of the same. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for being a compassionate, loving, and merciful God. Lord God, you didn't have to do it, but Lord God, we're thankful that you did. Lord God, we come now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, just to say thank you, Lord God. We come here, Lord God, assemble, Lord God, for no shape, form, or fashion, but to lift our high, lift our high. Lift our heads up to the hills, Lord God, from which cometh our help, Lord God. Our help comes from the Lord, who, Lord God, who sits high and look low, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, Lord God, for allowing us, Lord God, to be able to come here again. Lord God, we come now, Lord God, asking, Lord God, that you would touch this world, Lord God. That, Lord God, you would touch this nation, Lord God. That you would touch this saint, Lord God. That you would touch this city, Lord God. That, Lord God, there's so many senseless killings, Lord God. There's so many violence, Lord God. But, Lord God, we know, Lord God, you still sit high, Lord God. And you look whole, Lord God. That you're still a merciful God, Lord God. You're still a way-making God, Lord God. That, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Rapha, Lord God. That you are a healer, Lord God. That, Lord God, you are a way-maker, Lord God. You are a restorer, Lord God. And, Lord God, Lord God, we come now, Lord God. We pan after you, Lord God. Like the deer that pants out of the water, Lord God. We hunger, Lord God, and we thirst, Lord God, from your righteousness, Lord God. We say, Spirit, 
of the living God. Call fresh, Lord God, on us, Lord God. Touch these cold hearts of ours, Lord God. Make us renew us, Lord God. Renew us, Lord God. Cleanse us from the inside, Lord God, with your hisses, Lord God. Cleanse us from the inside, Lord God, with the hot, slopey water, Lord God. Lord God, that we be renewed, Lord God. We be made over, Lord God. That we look like you, Lord God. We walk like you, Lord God. We talk like you. We pray like you, Lord God. We preach like you, Lord God. But oh, Lord God, we live like God like you, Lord God. That we be salt and light, Lord God, in this dark world, Lord God. That we tell men, women, boys, and girls, Lord God, that you live, Lord God. That you died, Lord God. But Lord God, you rose again, Lord God. That you are a way maker, Lord God. You are a restorer, Lord God. Lord God, touch our pastor, Lord God. Touch him in a special way, Lord God. Blow him down into your storehouse, Lord God. That, Lord God, that he can preach your word, Lord God, like never before, Lord God. That someone, Lord God, I think he's done today, Lord God. That they may come saying, I yield, I yield. I can't hold on any longer. What must I do, Lord God, to be saved, Lord God? Let us be a world, Lord God. Let us be a people, Lord God. That tell them that the wages of sin is death, Lord God. But the gift of God is eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ, who lived, died, and rose again for us, Lord God. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that you, Lord God, you said it in your word, Lord God. Whatever we bind on earth, Lord God, is bind in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. So, Lord God, we bind now, Lord God, coronavirus, Lord God. We bind, Lord God, dear diabetes, Lord God. We bind, Lord God, high blood pressure, Lord God. We bind anything, Lord God, that, that tries to keep your people bound, Lord God. And we loose your peace, Lord God. We loose your love, Lord God. We loose your mercy, Lord God. We loose your compassion, Lord God. Heal us, Lord God. Deliver us, Lord God. Set us free, Lord God. Let us look like you. Let us talk like you. Let us walk like you, Lord God. We want to be made over, Lord God. And we say, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, Lord God. Spirit of the living God, make us new, Lord God. Make us over, Lord God. And Lord God, when we're done, Lord God, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, Lord God. All the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. scripture reading will come to you this morning from Acts, the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. I'll be reading to you from the NIV. Acts, the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man, crippled from birth, was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, mm -hmm. where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Yeah. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said to him, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging, who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and the doers of his most holy word. Amen. Amen. 
Continue to show yourself strong in this worship service. Come, Lord God. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. With all your quickening power and ignite these cold hearts of ours. Give us what we need, Lord God, to function, to prove your word to be true. Give us what we need, Lord, to represent you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people, all God's people, all God's people, say amen. Amen. Praise God. Oh, the Lord is good. <laughs> He's even better than that. <laughs> He's awesome. He's magnificent. He's righteous. He's holy. He's majestic. My Lord. Well, you've heard the scripture reading in your hearing, Acts chapter 3, beginning at verses 1 through 10. I'm going to pick up at verse 11. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Acts 3, beginning at the 11th verse. Now, as a lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and kill the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are now witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, a faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. I want to just repeat verse four one more time. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Look at us. Look at us. The title of this message is, look at us us yes. my lord the book of acts is known as the book of action you know it is dubbed the acts of the apostles but it's really the acts and the moving and the empowerment of the holy spirit working through the apostles to get things done if we look at acts chapter one jesus himself said don't worry about when we're going to take over don't worry about when things will change politically you need to be worried about one thing and one thing only. He said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the outermost parts of the earth. Don't be worried about the power. Don't be worried about of the don't be worried about the political power. Don't be worried about the social power. Don't be worried about anything else but the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, You shall receive power. You shall receive authority. You shall receive raw power to get the job done. And what is a job? To witness the men and women and boys and girls that Jesus is alive and he's alive forevermore to witness to them that there is a strength and a power outside of us there is a strength and a power that doesn't emanate from us there is a strength and a power that comes out straight from God that's poured out from the heart of God and that strength and that power is a power of the Holy Ghost and we all know when they were in one accord and in one place when they were praying the same thing and expecting the same thing and looking for the same thing, didn't quite know who the Holy Ghost was at that time. But Jesus told them to go to the holy city, go to Jerusalem, and you all wait. And as they waited, their thoughts began to get together. Their minds got together. Their prayers began to get together. And their thoughts and their prayers and their expectation became as one. And we know in Acts chapter 2, they had a sudden experience. Because they were all in one accord and in one place. And suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they became... Um, 
They were divided tongues like as a fire that sat upon them. In other words, the Holy Spirit came in and showed out. The Holy Spirit came in because they were waiting. They were in one accord with a heart full of expectancy. And they were expecting the Holy Ghost to do something. So he filled them with strength. He filled them with power. And that manifested on them in a in a tangible way that they could see tongues of fire that sat upon each of them. What would happen if on this pulpit y'all saw the fire of the Holy Ghost? You saw the actual fire of the Holy Ghost resting upon each and every one of us. I think that would change you in Facebook land. I think that would change you those who are watching. I think that would change us that are listening. I think that would change everybody in this sanctuary if we would see the strength and the power of the Holy Ghost. But guess what? In case you don't see any fire, in case you don't see a flame, don't you be dismayed because if you ask God to fill you with the Spirit, if you ask for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is indeed inside of you and he may manifest in a way he wants to manifest. He'll give you love. He'll give you joy. He'll give you peace. He'll give this, what's it, the gift of faith. He'll give you words of wisdom and knowledge. He'll give you tongues, interpretation of tongues. He'll give you gifts of healing. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost will get it done. He'll get it done. He will indeed get it done. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. See, y'all, this is Pentecost season. So we have to talk about the strength and the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, all those people, about 120 people, all in one accord, all in the same place, all in the same space, they had a suddenly experience. And they were so filled. There were Parthians and you know, Elamites and those dwelling in uh, Mesopotamia and Cretes and, uh, and Arabians. All these Jews from Libya, all these Jews converging on the Holy City at one time. And the Holy Spirit showed out and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So all the people said, wait, 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 wait a minute. All these men are from Galilee. All these men are Galileans. How is it that we hear them in our own native tongue? I know what. They got to be high. They got to be drunk. They must be on something. Maybe they went to the steak store before they came. Maybe they got a little sip sip or something before they came to church. Oh, but Peter said, no, no, they're not drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that that Joel and other prophets talked about. He said in the last days, and y'all know we're in the last days. We're in the last dispensation. That time of when, when Jesus went up and when he's coming back. He said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all on everybody, on my sons and my daughters, on my men servants, on my maid servants, and that day I'm going to pour out of my spirit, out of my spirit. He's going to give us what we need because he's going to pour out of his spirit. He's going to pour out of himself. He's going to give us the love and the joy and the gentleness and the kindness, all the fruit of the spirit. He's also going to give us some gifts of the spirit. He's going to equip us to get the job done. He's going to do it. He said, now this is, this, is, this is a fulfillment of prophecy. And uh, um, Acts chapter 2 goes on. They were all in one mind. Singleness of heart. You Look at this, y'all. They praised God in the temple. They praised God at the house. They, uh, they shared food. They were baking and cooking and loving on one another. Somebody didn't have enough. They gave them something. Whatever the need was, it was fulfilled by the body of Christ during that time. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord was spread about him. The spirit of the Lord moved from heart to heart and from breast to breast. The spirit of the Lord connected them together and they knew they were one family in God. Hallelujah. So Peter and John went up to the temple. It was about three o'clock at the, you know, the hour of prayer. They went up, went up to the temple. And they came across a brother, a certain man who was carried daily. Can you imagine that? Now I'm a little over 200 pounds, but can you imagine somebody having to pick me up every day and take me to the temple so I could survive? Somebody had to pick me up every day. I'm lame from my mother's womb, never knew how to walk. They picked me up every day and put me at the beautiful gate. So I can get my sustenance, so I can get my food, so I can survive. They got to carry me there every single day. Yes. All of my life. Mm -hmm. carry, can you imagine being carried? Now, if there was no governmental assistance, 
There was no social security. Nobody was giving them a check. But they, they had to depend on, those who were lame had to depend on the goodness and the kindness of the people who came into the temple to worship. Yeah. Peter and John, new preachers. Yeah. Peter and John yeah. just got an assignment, not from yeah. a bishop, but yeah. from the Holy Ghost. Peter and John hadn't been to seminary anyway. Peter and John going to the temple at the hour of prayer. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb asked for some change. Ask for some money. Ask for because that was his job. He couldn't do anything else. He stood there, well, not stood there, but he was there and he asked for money, asked for sustenance. Yes, yes, yes. And Peter said, Look at this, y'all. It says, Peter and John Whitcomb said, Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. I wonder when people look at us. When people look at the Bible, I wonder when people look at us, what do they see? But Pete said, now old Pete, now old roughneck fisherman, full of the Holy Ghost, old Peter who cursed at one time and said, Jesus, I don't know you, but God restored him. Holly, old Peter, old Pete said, look at us. But I don't have any money. He probably pulled his pocket. I don't have any money. I don't have any change. I don't have anything to give you. I don't have to give you what you think you need. He said, now, but look at me. And the Bible says the man looked at him, Henry, expecting to receive something. He looked at him expecting. When people look at us, do they expect anything? Do they expect them? When they look at us preachers, do all they do is just expect a hoop and a holler and a car? Do they expect anything? Do they expect just a, a, a sweet little prayer and a good little sermon and reading? The, is that all they expect? If that's all they expect, something's wrong. If that's all they expect, but maybe that's all they expect because that's all they seek. Peter said, look at me. Peter said, now look, I just know a couple of things. I know how to fish and I know Jesus. I know how to catch men now, and I know the Holy Ghost because I just had an experience with it. Uh -huh. I don't know everything. I only know a couple of things. But look at me, brother, and I don't have any money to give you, but what I do have, yes. I give unto yes. thee. Yes. What I do have, I give unto thee. Uh -huh. See, people of God, we think we need all this stuff. We think we need this and that to be fulfilled. We think we need this in order for people to, oh, they got it going on. They must be saved. But what you do have, Peter said, all I have is a Holy Ghost. And I just know Jesus. No, I'm going to give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, yes, yes. Nazareth was a hood. Yes, come on. Not Jesus of Jerusalem, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, yes. Why am I pointing that out? Because he does make a. Came up, but do you know the Prince of Life? Do you know the Prince of Peace? Do you know the Holy Ghost? Of Nazareth, oh rise up and walk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and look at old Peter. Yeah. Brother had never walked before. Mm -hmm. This brother had never stood before. He was lame from his mother's womb. He was born this way. Oh, but I thank God he didn't stay that way. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Pete grabbed him and yanked him up. Come on. Now that takes faith. Yes. That takes faith. Yes. Because Peter knew if I yank you up, the Holy Ghost is going to back me up. And I know that when I pull you up, somebody else is going to hold you up. And I know when I snatch you up, I know God is going to lift you up. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he pulled him and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Hallelujah. And that brother didn't keep it quiet because some of us will be quiet on God. Oh, yes, we will. We'll be quiet on God. 
Yes. Got those secret things that we're dealing with and God delivers or God heals or God sets us free or God provides or God does whatever he does. We'll, he, we'll be quiet on God because we don't want to look like a holy roller. We don't want to look like we're sanctified, whatever that's supposed to mean. We don't want to look weird. We don't look, but you need to shout this brother because he had never walked before. He got up. He jumped up. And he began to walk and leap. And he began to give God praise. Y'all don't understand. I've never used my legs before. He went up. He leaped up. And he was walking and leaping and giving God praise. I don't even know what it's like to stand up. I never stood up before, but because of a man named Jesus from a little old raggedy town called Nashville, because this old fisherman believed in his name. This old fisherman ain't been in nobody's school. He told me in the name of Jesus, because I was expecting something. He came, he told me in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And guess what? He snatched me up and I stood up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just came to ask you a question this morning. When people look at us, what do they see? When people look at us, what do they perceive? When people do us, look at us, do they know we have a relationship with Jesus? Or do they just say, oh, that's a church boy. That's a church girl. Oh, they just sing in the choir. Oh, they're just us. They're just a steward. They're just a trustee. But when people look at us, what do they see? Can they see we've had an experience with Jesus? Can they perceive that we get in filled with the Holy Ghost on a daily basis? Do they see the strength and the power of God? What do they see? So when people look at us, what do they see? Now look at this. Before people look at us, before people look at us, we have to look at them. Mm, my God. Before people look at us, yes. we have to look at them. I'm talking yes. about Peter and John. Mm -hmm. Okay? See, but so before Peter could say, look at me, Peter had to have a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm just talking about the Holy Ghost field lifestyle, but they saw Peter before. They saw him as a cursing fisherman. Who denied the prince of life. They saw him deny Jesus. Oh, but I thank God for the before and after. They looked at him before and said, oh, but it's got to be something real. It's got to be something tangible. There has to have a, he has been changed by the Holy Ghost because he is here now. And he's just delivered a sermon and 3,000 folk got saved. He's here, this guy who ran from the crowd, who ran from the authorities, who ran for the police, who lied and say, I don't know him. He even cursed about it. But now he's a changed man. He's given sermons. He doesn't know, he hadn't been to school in the world, but... By the power of the Holy Ghost, he knows exactly what to say and what to do. He says, look at us. Look at us. When God looks at us, does he drop his head? When God looks at us, does he say, what are my children doing? When God looks at us, is he confused? When God looks at us, does he say, you're confusing my people? You got a double lifestyle. When God looks at us, or when God looks at us, is he said, that's my son. That's my daughter. Oh, they're slipping up and making mistakes, but they're trying, they're trying, they're trying. They're getting back up again, and they're trying again, and they're asking for the power of the Holy Ghost to make it and to get stronger and to not do that again. Oh, look at my children. They're shining. They're looking more and more like me every day. Hallelujah. Look at my children. They're growing in the things of God. Look at my children. They're flourishing. Look at my children. They're getting more and more humble, and the pride is leaving. Oh, look at my babies. Look at my children. They begin to walk and they're leaping now and they're giving God oh look at my children they're growing and they're looking like me oh look at my children they're looking like me sounding like me acting like me hallelujah hallelujah people of God the world wants somebody to look at they want somebody to look at and they want us to reflect the glory of God they want us to look like Jesus so it doesn't matter. I came to tell somebody that it doesn't matter how you were raised or where you were raised. It, that, all that doesn't matter. There's one thing that's needful, that you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And if you really want to get in the game in a powerful way, you need to ask 
for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, empower me to get things done. Empower me, not for my glory, but for your glory. Lord God, I want people, when they look at me, I want them to be convicted, not me pointing fingers, but they say, I've got to get it together. When people look at us, when they look at us, they should see people who are trying to follow God. Yes. And that lifestyle should convict and cause them to want to change. Yes. Look at us, yes. the body of Christ. It's been over 2,000 years since Jesus came, bled, and died. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father. Yes. Look at us. Yes. Are we looking like him? Yes. Are we acting like him? Look at us. So I challenge you today, wherever you are, look at yourself. Am I saved? Do I even know what that means? Am I a member of the body of Christ? Do I know Jesus as my Lord and my Savior? Or have I just been playing church? Have I been going to church because my folks want me to go to church? Look at yourself. Now, if you're saved, look at yourself again. Am I living right? Am I representing Jesus well? Look at, look at us. Look at us. If you don't know Jesus, this is your moment, this is your time to get to know him. I invite you to come just as you are. Don't say I've got to get myself together. We don't have that kind of strength and power, nor do you have that amount of time. So, so if this is you, just say, Lord God, I come. I've messed up. I've really screwed things up, but I still come. And I don't come because I'm right. Matter of fact, I'm wrong. I come because I believe in your son, Jesus. So I come based on your word. And I know that you are not a man that you should lie. Neither the son of man that you should repent. So I come based on your word. And you said, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. So Lord God, I confess that Jesus is my everything. He's my Lord and my Savior. And according to your word, Lord God, I know you're saving me right here, right now. And Lord God, lead me to a good place to grow. Because Lord, I still have some of those same thoughts and feelings and considerations. But lead me to a group of believers that, are, that hold me accountable. Lead me, Lord God, to a good place to grow in. So when people look at me, when they look at us, they give God glory. They get strength. They get empowered. Bless me, Lord God. Save me today. And because of your word, I know you have. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Look at us. My Lord. We love you today. We're praying for you daily that we look like Jesus. Be blessed, be empowered, be encouraged. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.